A little while back, we did a review of a Vivor jackhammer, and a viewer commented on the video that the jackhammer doesn't actually produce the wattage that Vivor says that it does. Vivor says that it's a 2200 watt unit, and the viewer claimed that it's somewhere more around 1500 watts. We don't know if that's true, but we're gonna do a little bit of an experiment today. And I also wanna use this experiment to show the relationship between watts, volts, and amps. So the relationship is watts equals volts times amps. So let's think about this in terms of, say, a toaster in your home. So if you look at the plate on the toaster, it'll say something like uh, 1200 watts, 800 watts, something like that. And then you'll see that it's made for a 100, 120 volt system. And so let's just say we have a toaster, let's just say it's 1000 watts. And we know that it's for a 120 volt system. What we don't know is how many amps it draws. And so this is one of the things that I'm going to be showing you today is how to actually measure watts. I don't want you to do it in your home. The reason I'm going to do it is because I need to see how many amps the Vivor jackhammer actually draws so that I can figure out what the wattage actually is versus what Vivor says that it is. So I'm gonna use a water analogy to describe watts, volts, and amps. And the reason I wanna do that is because the way that you're going to measure voltage versus amperage is going to be different. It's, it's not as simple as just going and plugging a couple prongs into an outlet and you're gonna be able to figure everything out just from that information. And so, let's say we have a water tower. And the water tower is still put up to the top. So we have a column of water that high. So there's a lot of energy here. So let's say we have a valve here, and then we have our water system. And so if we turn this valve open, water's gonna start flowing. The flow of water is current. But the pressure of the water, meaning the column of water here, and how much energy you have stored to actually push that water through the pipe is our voltage. And this is really no different than say an outlet in your house. So you have a voltage there, 120 volts, so there's some power at an outlet. So you're gonna plug something in, and as soon as you turn on the switch, you're gonna start having a flow of electrons. And so this is essentially what's going on. We have a lot of water here that's stored up, we open the valve, and there's a current. But it is possible to change the voltage and the current and still get the same amount of wattage. And so let's say that we have a water tower that's say 500 feet tall. And then we have a pipe that's say five inches. And so with a 500 foot tall water tower and a five inch pipe, let's say we get some sort of force of water coming out of the pipe. But then let's change the water tower height to say only 100 feet, but we'll say this is 15 inches now. So now the force can actually be the same. So the first force and the second force could actually be the same. We just have more water going through the pipe, but less push. And it's the same thing in watts. If you were to do the math and kind of rearrange volts and amps and give them different values, you can still get the same amount of watts, still the same amount of power. As a practical example, let's say you have a microwave that uses 1200 watts. So 1200 watts equals 120 volts times 10 amps. In Europe, they have 240 volt systems. So if you were to get a 1200 watt microwave in Europe, you would get 1200 watts equals 240 volts times five amps. You can see that both microwaves use equal watts, but the push and the flow of electrons are different, just like in the water tower analogy. So let's look at the AC system in your home. You have a panel box, and you have a wire that comes over to an outlet, and then you have another wire that returns and goes back to your bus bar in your panel box. And so in our panel box, we have our breaker where the power is actually coming from, where the electricity is actually coming from. 
And then we have the bus bar, which is where the electrons are returning to. So if we're looking at our water tower analogy, this breaker would be the top of the tower, and this bus bar would be the bottom of the tower. So let's just take a typical 120 volt circuit in your home. So if this was the top for a water tower, what we actually have here is 120 volts. And how the water wanted to run through the piping down to the ground, this would be the bottom, so this would be zero volts. So using a multimeter set to voltage in your two probes, you can sit here and measure voltage across two points and get 120 volts. So if you're in your panel box, you could touch the breaker and you could go to your bus bar and get 120 volts. You could also go to your outlet and touch the hot side and the neutral side and get 120 volts. So with voltage, it's basically measuring one point against another point. Let's say that we have electrons flowing around the circuit. We, we're not measuring one point against another point like you do with voltage. What we want to know is say you're going to take this point here. We want to know how many electrons are passing this point here. And that will give us our amperage, how many electrons are actually flowing around the circuit. And so here I've broken the circuit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my two probes and I'm going to set them on either end of the circuit where it's broken. And so now if my multimeter is set to amps and I touch each side of this open circuit, what I've done is make the multimeter part of the circuit. And so as electrons pass through the multimeter on the amperage setting, it'll actually display your amperage. So it's obviously not convenient to break a circuit and put probes on either side of the broken circuit to measure amperage. And so there's a different principle that they use. So if you have a wire and there's current flowing through the wire, there's actually a magnetic field that's built up around the wire. And so what you're going to measure that magnetic field with around the wire is one of these clamps. So if you have your wire, you'll put your clamp around the wire, and if there's electricity or amperage current flowing through the wire, and you put your clamp around the wire, it'll measure the magnetic field which will be proportional to the current going through the wire. So why did I just go through that super long explanation? It's because the way I'm going to measure the amperage of the jackhammer, or how much amperage the jackhammer is going to draw when it's running, I'm going to need some way to split the lines apart so I can use my clamp. So obviously the safest way is to go buy one of these AC line splitters. So you just plug it into an outlet, plug in your device, and then when you're running your device you can go ahead and clamp on any, either one of these openings here. There is a couple different ranges so obviously I'd want to use the times one range, but this is a 15 amp max unit but I don't want to use this line splitter because I already know that the jackhammer draws more than 15 amps because obviously I tried it before I made this video. So what I did is I made a little homemade line splitter to where I'm going to be able to plug one side into an extension cord, the other side will get plugged into the jackhammer and then I can go ahead and use my clamp to clamp around the wires and I'll be able to measure the amperage. I will be using the line splitter to test voltage though and so you could just put a probe in each one of these holes here and measure the voltage. The reason this is important to do if I really want to get an accurate measurement is your outlets provide about 120, 124 volts and I want to see how much the voltage drop is when this jackhammer is actually running. And so am I still getting the full 110 volts or whatever the unit's rated for, the unit voltage is going to be different than the voltage that the power company provides. And so I want to know what the actual voltage is of the jackhammer. And then I'm going to use that value multiplied times the amperage that it draws and that'll give me the wattage. Okay, I have my Vivor jackhammer and I have my voltmeter plugged into my line splitter. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this jackhammer revved up, see if there's any type of voltage drop. Okay. 
I have my makeshift line splitter set up, my multimeter set to amperage. Go ahead and fire the jackhammer up again. So based on my measurements, I got 116 volts times 14 amps, which gives me approximately 1624 or about 1600 watts. I did try this experiment one other time and I actually got around 15.4 amps. So based on my previous experiment and the experiment I just showed here for this video, uh, it's anywhere between 1600 and 1800 watts is what the jackhammer is actually producing. So Vivor claimed that the jackhammer is actually 2200 watts. And so are they just a bunch of liars or what's going on? What's actually going on is that their jackhammer is designed for 2200 watts. That means between the voltage going into the unit and the amperage flowing through the unit should be basically designed for 2200 watts. Obviously in the real world, things aren't efficient, aren't 100% efficient, and so that's where you get some of the loss. I will say that the viewer wasn't completely wrong. Um, obviously, it's not producing you know the 2200 watts. I certainly don't think the jack camera was underpowered though. It worked you know, pretty well for me, um, but it obviously isn't gonna produce the, 20, the 2200 watts as there are gonna be energy losses with heat and things like that. So I hope this video helps you understand a little bit more about how current flows through a circuit and what amperage, wattage, and voltage means and how they're all kind of interrelated. I think it was fun to actually experiment with the device, see how many amps and volts are actually being used in the circuit by the piece of equipment. Uh, I would say that I wouldn't try this at home. There's really no reason for a homeowner to do this kind of stuff. If you're super bored, just go back to watching Desperate Housewives or collect stamps or something because there's no reason to really do this in your home. If you found this video helpful and you think somebody else would benefit from watching it, please go ahead and send it to them. And we're so grateful for everyone who has supported our channel and thanks for watching.